School districts in six states, Texas, Illinois, Virginia, Wisconsin, Missouri, and my home state of Minnesota. They are refusing to air the president's address, and in some cases they are with conditions. And today, Republican State Senator Steve Russell of Oklahoma made some of the most outrageous comments I've ever heard about the president of the United States speaking to kids. He says, this is not civics education. It gives the appearance of creating a cult of personality. This is something you'd expect to see in North Korea or in Saddam Hussein's Iraq. Well, actually, it looks like something you'd see right here in the United States of America, Mr. State Senator. Here's Ronald Reagan addressing the students back in 1988. And let's not forget George Bush 41 talking to the kids in 1991. And of course, let's not forget Bush 43 in the classroom in Florida on the morning of September 11th. It was the infamous My Pet Goat moment. All three of those presidents in front of public students. Now, let's get something straight. This is money in the bank for the righty talkers. They, 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 they don't care. They don't care about anybody's kids. They hate public education. They want attention and they want it right now. You see, this is the best way for them to get attention and to hitch their wagon to the Tea Party, the birther Hitler indoctrination crowd. That's what they're all about. It is disgraceful that some school districts are playing this like a political shameful game, pre-screening the president of the United States to determine if his back to school welcome is appropriate. What's next? What do you say we have two different sets of textbooks? We got textbooks for liberal kids and we got textbooks for conservative kids. And school, I thought, was all about learning about facts. And the fact is the president of the United States won the job. He got the most votes. He's our commander in chief. Show some respect. Well, joining me now is journalist and commentator Stephen A. Smith. Stephen, I think some race plays into this too. I think that there are some parents out there across America that no matter, come hell or high water, they do not want their child exposed to Barack Obama. Or am I off base on that? Well, I'm not gonna say that you're off base, but, off base, but I'm not gonna say you're completely accurate simply because it's very difficult to determine what's inside somebody's mind and then somebody's heart. But clearly, when you look at the way some of these people are choosing to conduct themselves and they then the, the neglect towards the facts. You know, you got to really wonder what's going on here. The fact is, over 69 million people voted for Barack Obama. Over 52 percent of American citizens voted for him to be the president of the United States. When you consider the fact that both Ronald Reagan and George H. W. Bush spoke to students, and George W. Bush did so on the morning of 9/11, and then all of a sudden there's this uproar about the president who actually is going to put the speech online a day ahead of time so the parents can read it and feel comfortable but with Stephen knowing I, what he's going to say to their kids. It's really yeah. unnecessary. Stephen A., they are accusing the president of the United States trying to brainwash these kids when he speaks to them about goals, motivation, good grades, stay focused. Uh, how do you respond to that? I, I respond to it by saying maybe because those same people have been brainwashed themselves by some of the radio pundits, some of the people in the media, and some of the things that have been disseminated to the masses on the right side. The fact is, is that as a registered independent, I'm not somebody that agrees with everything our president does. There's no question about that. But in this particular situation, it has escalated beyond the realms of ridiculousness. There is no reason on earth for people to be in an uproar over such a thing. He is the president of the United States. And like I said to you a few weeks ago, when we were discussing the Glenn Beck fiasco and some of the things that he had to say about our president. It's one thing to be critical of the president in terms of his policies, but to attack him on a personal level to the point where you're accusing him of indoctrinating children with socialism when, in fact, you don't even know what the man is going to say. It's highly disrespectful to the commander in chief of our nation. Here's what gets me is they're, they're too stupid to figure this out. What if the president did get political? What, what if the president did make some kind of statement to recruit them to the Democratic Party or liberal ideology? He would be politically ruined in this country. He would have no chance. And, 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 I, and I think that people would really see it for what it is. But we have gotten to the point in this country where we are so polarized, everything is political. Well, 
It, why had you use you, you you use the p word polarized? I would say panic, and the reason why I say panic is because again, Obama advertised he campaigned on the fact that change was coming to America. Let's face reality; it's a change that a lot of people in America simply are not ready for, and some really have a problem with. So because of that, every word that comes out of his mouth, they're hitting the panic button. And what they don't realize, I'm talking about people on the Republican side, because not all Republicans feel this way, but some of them who do feel this way about Obama. Talking to these kids, what they're not realizing is that it adds credence to the argument that again, you're not dealing with fact, you're not dealing with reality, you're being an extremist, and that's what turns yeah. moderates off towards them because they're panicking over something that I believe is relatively innocuous, to say the least. I think it sends a horrible message. It does to 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 minorities, to kids in this country. Not that, just uh, minorities, uh, uh, though. Yeah. Not just yeah, minorities. Well, yeah, no, but but in, but now, Stephen A. I got to tell you, this is the key issue. We can't run from this at all. I think it sends a terrible message. I mean, why all of a sudden would this president be in, inferior in his message when academically he's one of the most accomplished guys we've well, ever clearly, had but, go but, into but, the but, Oval but, Office? But nobody would question whether he's inferior or not because we know better. I just think again it points to fear. And if you're a child of African American descent, you look up to this man, you admire what he's accomplished. I'm a grown man. I'm 41 years old, and I have tremendous pride in what this man has been able to accomplish, even in the process no of me disagreeing with some of the things that he does. I am proud that he's our president. I just think he, I just wish he did some things differently, but that's a story for another day, Ed. Yes, it is, and that will you will be on another day. Stephen A. Smith, great to see you. Good to have you with us tonight, All buddy. Right. Thank All you. All right, no problem, man.